Hi there, my name is Scott Nicholson, and the goal of this video is to introduce you to modern board games based upon the concepts found in Monopoly. So what I'm doing with this video you're going to see, which has been taken from BoardGamesWithScott.com, is I take different aspects of Monopoly and then use that aspect to present other game ideas that you might want to explore if you've wanted to explore the world of modern board games. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. So if you're new to board games and modern board games, welcome. It's a whole world out here, kind of like in the Matrix, you know. If you take the board games with Scott Pill, you're going to find yourself going into an Alice in Wonderland amazing world of all sorts of interesting games. Now, Monopoly was designed originally over 100 years ago, and there's been a lot of things that have happened in board game design since that time. In the 1990s, we had an influx of games come over from Germany, and since that time, this concept of the modern board game, or the designer board game, has really taken off. Um, many of these games are much more interactive. They allow you to make more interesting decisions during the play. They have you involved all the time, so you're not just sitting there waiting to take your turn, but you're engaged with what's going on. They have different ways of engaging with other people, different ways of socializing during the game, things that get you involved with the game quite a bit more than Monopoly does. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk through the different aspects of Monopoly and then tell you another game you might want to consider if that's your favorite aspect. Because my hope is that by the time this episode is done, you'll have identified one or two new games that you'd like to go on, out and try based upon what it is that you enjoy about Monopoly. Now, I'm going to say Monopoly is not a bad game, but it has a few problems that frustrate people who play a lot of modern board games. One of the problems is the length of the game. Uh, the game can go quite a long time, and we actually sometimes artificially make that game go longer by adding a house rule. So if you use a house rule involving the free parking space, where you decide to put any money taken out of the game and put it on free parking, and then award it to someone who, win, who lands on free parking, don't do that anymore. Because in the game design, what went on is they put in things into the game to take money out of the game, to help keep the length of the game under control. By you choosing to not take that money out of the game, but instead distributing it to other players, you're just artificially adding on time to the game, and that's decided by a random whoever rolls and lands on that space first. So please, take out that, take out that house rule. Another aspect of Monopoly that people don't like is the player elimination. Because if you get together a group of people to have a board game experience and you start playing Monopoly and someone gets eliminated and everyone has to get eliminated before someone can win, well then it's not very much fun for that person anymore. And because the game can go on for hours after someone's eliminated, it can create a pretty unpleasant experience. Another aspect about Monopoly that a lot of people don't like is that you don't get to make a decision about what you do on your turn. You roll the dice, and based upon what you roll, you move to a space on the board. And then you may get a chance to do something on that space. Typically, if you go somewhere and you can buy something, you should buy it. That's the basic strategy of Monopoly, is always buy what you land on. But other than that, there's not a lot of interesting decision making that you get to do in Monopoly. The games we're going to be talking about today, these other games, have many more interesting decisions that you get to make during your turn. And they don't have that roll and move mechanic. But what if that's what you like? What if what you like in Monopoly is the roll and move mechanic? Well, then there's a game for you. If what you enjoy doing is rolling dice and moving people on the track, then I'll suggest you take a look at That's Life. In That's Life, you have a track that's made up of these and so the nice thing is the track is different every time. You have three playing pieces on the track, and on your turn you roll this die, and you move one of your pieces the number that you rolled. Now here's the trick. If you're the last person to step off of a tile, you take that tile. Now these tiles, some of them have positive points, and some of them have negative points. And so what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and arrange it so you can pick up the positive points, but so you get off of the negative points as quickly as possible. So the board collapses as the game goes on, and you continue working your way towards the end. So it takes that roll and move mechanic, but allows you a lot of interesting choices each turn without really adding that much more complexity. So again, that's life. Now what if what you like about Monopoly is buying properties? Well then let me tell you about another game. If you're interested in buying and selling real estate, then Acquire is a game I'll suggest you take a look at. Acquire was designed by Sid Saxon a few decades ago, but it really was a point at where we started designing games in different ways. Because in Acquire, there's no piece that represents you moving around on the board. Instead, what you have here is a grid that represents real estate. And on your turn, you're going to play these tiles from your hand, 
and put them onto the matching square on the board. Now what will happen is as tiles touch, whenever you get two or more tiles in a group, it creates a new hotel chain. And so you take one of these large hotel chains and introduce it onto the board whenever that happens. And then as a reward, you're going to get a share of stock in that hotel chain. You may then buy more shares of stock for all the chains that are available. And what will happen is as more and more tiles are played, these things will get larger and larger until they touch and then one will swallow up the other. And whoever had shares of stock in the one that's disappearing gets money and that's a good thing. And so part of what's going on in the game is you have hidden information because you have a hand of these tiles. You know what you have control over. So if this were the situation and I had this I-11 tile, I knew I could control when this was going to grow quite a bit. So if this were the situation and here was this company, I might choose to invest in it knowing that I can play that tile on I-11 and it's immediately going to go, grow quite a bit more because the larger a hotel chain is, the more money it's worth. So this is a much more engaging game with lots of interesting decisions. It's called Acquire. But what if what you like to do is collect sets of stuff? If what you like to do is collect sets of stuff, I'll suggest you take a look at a game called Zularetto. It was the game of the year in Germany in 2007. In Zularetto, you're building a zoo. Each player has a board and it has several pens for animals. The trick is each pen can only hold one type of animal. So during the game you're going to collect animals and collect sets of animals and your goal is to try and fill up as much of your zoo as you can. You have to make some choices as the game goes on because you have the option to extend out your zoo and make it larger but that costs you some resources. On your turn you're going to either take a tile from the bag which has all the animals and load that into one of these trucks. There's one truck for each player in the game or you can choose to take a truck and that will end your uh, actions for that turn. So if I could take this truck, if I really wanted elephants, I could take this truck even though it's got an empty spot or I could take a risk and hopefully maybe I'll draw another elephant and I'll get to add that into it. And I drew a coin, which is fine, I'll put it there. But the problem is now another player could take that if they wanted two elephants and a coin and I might get stuck with one of the other two trucks. So the game, it's fast moving, there's a lot of interesting decisions and you get to collect sets of animals. Oh, and the animals make babies. If a male and a female are in the same pen, boop, a baby animal appears. The problem is you may not have room, so it's off to the glue house for the babies. No, 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 you can sell animals to other players. But what if what you enjoy is trading? If trading is what you like, then I'll point you to the Settlers of Catan. Now, this came over in the 1990s from Germany, and it was what started this concept of designer games in the US, and they're called designer games because the designer's name is there on the box. In the Settlers of Catan, what you're doing is you're on an island, and this is just part of the board. You roll the dice at the start of each turn, and anyone that has one of these little houses that's adjacent to a number that's rolled gets stuff. So if I rolled a two, then I would get some sheep from this place here. And then what goes on in the game is everyone could trade with the player whose turn it is. So if you happen to have some wood and I had sheep, we might want to make that exchange. The point of getting the resources in Settlers is to build things. So you can build new roads to get to other places on the islands, new settlements to get more resources, new cities which get you even more resources, and cards which get you a variety of things. But all these things can get you points and the goal of the game is to get so many points and then you win. And so in the game you do a lot of trading and a lot of negotiating. So if you like the trading elements, I'll point you to the Settlers of Catan. But what if what you like to do is be a really shrewd manipulator and making big deals? If what you like are making the big deals, then I'm going to point you to a game called I'm the Boss. Now I'm the Boss was also designed by Sid Saxon. And I'm the Boss is a game about making deals. And what you've got is this board that represents deals that can be made. And so a space is going to show you who has to be involved in a deal. So if someone lands on this space, that means the green and the yellow have to be involved in a deal. Each player is going to have cards which represent contacts they have in these different families. So for green and yellow to make this deal, there needs to be someone with the green and someone with the yellow willing to cut a deal. Now it could be one player has both of these and they can just make the deal all by themselves. But most likely you're going to have to negotiate. Now some of these spaces have big deals. It's like you need four of these five to be able to do the deal. And so you've got to get a lot of players going in and negotiating with each other. And so you end up cutting these really big complex deals, splitting the loot from the deal. But then all of a sudden some player can play this card called I'm the boss, which means now this person's turn, whoever plays that card is now taking over as the person organizing the deal and everyone reports to him. So if you like the big deal moment in Monopoly where you're doing the big property trades, then you want to take a look at I'm the boss. But what if what you like doing is crushing the other people and sending them into bankruptcy? Well then I'll point you to a little card game called Crunch. 
Crunch is a card game, and I did a whole episode on board games with Scott with it, and it's about the banking industry. And in this game, you are playing a banker, and a corrupt one at that. And what you're doing is you're setting up this bank, and it's going to fail. They're all going to fail at some point, and your goal is to fail last and to end up with the most money in your pocket that you snuck away. So if you like that sort of underhanded, sending everyone else to the poor house, then you may want to take a look at Crunch. But what if what you like are all those wacky cards, chance and community chest? What might you look at then? If you want a strategy game based upon wacky cards, I'll point you to Dominion. Now, Dominion is a game, it looks like a board game, but it's really just a card game. The game has a bunch of different types of cards. And in each game you play, you have 10 different types of cards that are available. What you're going to do, it'd be like in Monopoly, if the game started and you were able to buy your own chance and community chest cards to make your own personal deck that you would pick from whenever you landed on one of those spaces. That's the basic idea here. You get to buy the cards that let you do what you want to do. And so you're going to spend money from your hand in order to buy cards. And when you buy a card, it then goes into your deck and you'll get it later on the game. And then you can use that card to get more cards. And you're going to use all of that to try and get victory points. It's a short game. It takes 20 to 30 minutes. It's not overly complex. But because there's 25 different types of cards and you only use 10 in any one game, there's a lot of variety and replayability in this game. But what if it's the auctions that you like? <laughs> If you like the auctions, I'll point you to a game called High Society. High Society takes about half an hour. It's a pretty light game. And what you're doing in High Society is you're taking turns bidding for different pieces of art. There, are, Most of the cards are good cards, but there are some bad cards in there as well, which you don't want to get. You try to bid to avoid the bad cards. And so what's going to go on in High Society is the card will come up. You'll bid on it. You might win it or not. You don't know when the game is going to end. And here's the trick. If you have the least amount of money when the game ends, you lose the game. So you cannot bid crazy because you know you have to maintain more money than someone else at the table to be able to have a chance to win the game. And that twist makes this a really clever auction game. But let's say you don't want to deal with any of these designer games, any of this stuff. You just like Monopoly. What can you do? Well, I'll point you to Monopoly Deal. Monopoly Deal is a card game version of Monopoly. It takes about 15 minutes to play. It's light. You are still getting properties and swapping properties and playing cards on each other and saying bad words as bad things happen to you. It gives you the feel of Monopoly, but it only takes about 15 minutes to play. So if you say, you know, Scott, I just like the feel of Monopoly, then I'll encourage you to give Monopoly Deal a try. <laughs> Hopefully, by this time, you've gotten some ideas of new games you'd like to try. Now, where can you get these games? Well, that's one of the challenging parts. Now, the department stores, the toy stores, they're going to carry Monopoly, and it's going to be pretty cheap, $10 to $15. I equate Monopoly and the, the offerings of those stores to kind of the, like the dollar menu at a lot of fast food restaurants. It's readily available. It's inexpensive. It'll fill you up, but it's perhaps not the best choice if you want a nutritious meal. In the game space, the, many of the games that they sell at department stores, toy stores, well, they're readily available, they're cheap, they'll give you a game experience, but it's not going to provide you the rich game experience that you could have if you went out somewhere a little bit more gourmet, if you want to use that term. And so what we're talking about now is either finding a specialty game shop in your area or to go online to one of the online game shops. Um, funagain.com is one of the sponsors of Board Games with Scott. And they're a shop that actually gives back to the community with grants for schools and educators and libraries. Uh, so I really like what they do. And these are places where you can get some of these games to give you a uh, more filling game experience when you sit down. So if you're thinking about doing some gaming after this upcoming holiday season, Put away the Monopoly board and pull out something else. You might find you're more engaged with each other, more interested in what's going on, and find a renewal and a love for board games that many of us already share. If you want to learn more about a lot of these board games, the best website in the world is BoardGameGeek.com. It's a huge database with thousands and thousands of reviews and discussions and files about all these different board games. And so you can go there and explore. There are board game groups all over the place. And if you search in Board Game Geek, you should be able to find the nearest board game group to you. And you can go there and say, hey, I just learned about this world of modern board games. Please show me more. And they'll be happy to do so. So welcome to the world of modern board gaming. Hopefully, you'll find some things you enjoy. And you may see me around. I've got about 70 other episodes of Board Games with Scott. You can go and take a look and learn a lot more about this whole world. So now that you've seen it, you can't go back. And hopefully, that little metal dog will stay in the box. So take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.
here on Twitter or Facebook, you can keep up with me there. I have one feed for my life and my, my games and things like that, and a second feed for miniature game reviews. Come and join me. Oh, and the animals make babies! I need babies. Where are my babies? Where'd my baby go? Give me my mama's baby! There!